Brian was doing it for a while. It seemed to help him. I said Claritin. Oh, well, that, that works too. Drugs help too. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. We're a bit early, but uh, we're going to get ready and record the listener questions. And then Friday, we're going to be talking about for the Friday show here shortly. We're going to be talking about Tough Disney Choices Summer Edition to kick off the Memorial Day weekend and start of summer for you. So stand by for that. I'm going to try to get through all these allergies. So I apologize for that as well. About to sneeze. Yay, I'm trying to don't shake do that. Off. I know. Don't do that. Let's get the listening questions popped up here. All right. All right. Got that. We got the banner. We got the uh, recording software. Twitter's up. Pull up the comments. You got it all. We're all fancy now. I know it's just, it's not showing on my Facebook profile, so I'll have to look mess it with it. Yeah, I forgot to do it. I'm just I've been so busy. Scott has his somehow. I don't know. I'll ask Scott because his yeah. is listed. I don't know what he did. Got like, it. I could accidentally go on his if I wanted to. No, not right now. Hello, Amanda from Saratoga Springs, New York. Did you know? That they named Saratoga Springs, New York, after the Walt the, the Disney Park, Park. Yeah. Or the Disney Hotel. Yeah, that's exactly oh, cool. what it is. My they sister used to live in Saratoga Springs too. Right after she got married, they lived there for a little bit. Is it all about horses? All about horses. It is Damn. all about horses. I love the way that they redid the new Saratoga Springs lobby, though. Like, and they have oh, yeah, kind of pictures it. of the gorgeous. Yeah, it looks good. It really does. They did nice. a good job. I didn't I do realize like they redid it. I, yeah, they they brought in a um, it's a like what do they call that the taxidermy of secretariat right Stop. there. The Stop. Yeah, it's we cool. are gonna get emails about this. You are the worst person ever. I'm glad. Well, you will get emails. Well, yeah, we won't see them. Yeah, Ricky I and I want a little was, disclaimer. Was it yes. secretariat 1973? I think that was the year I was born. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like I would born. know I this in my brain. Oh, the secretariat's, greatest, the, the secretariat's like one. Of, they say one of the greatest like athletes of all time. Like I mean, yeah. like, triple crown. But it's just not stuff. something I don't remember dates about anything. I also, I wasn't born. Well, I was. So what's yeah, that? there you go. <laughs> oh, and by the way, so. We got to get recording because Mallory just got home. I just heard upstairs the door crack Um, because there's like a when she opens the door, like all the other doors in the house, because like the, everything's sealed so tightly, like all the other doors kind of got and it. Door shut in the studio. She just texted. She got advanced on her EOC math, which is a big deal because she always thinks she's not smart because Paige oh. was smart and she thinks she's not as smart as Paige oh. and she's a cheerleader. So she thinks she can't be smart. What? But That's got, terrible. I know she's got this thing about being a cheerleader that she can't be smart. She got an advanced in her end of. Uh, Let me smack her around a little bit. It'll be fine. <laughs> no, before Friday. Can you believe it? she's already done with school? Wow. Two and a half days left. Oh Crazy. my gosh. Crazy. They're out. I know. I'm jealous. Man, Crazy. I had summer break. That's part of teaching I miss. <laughs> summer break. Well, it's you know, fun. yeah. Yes. All right. Let's do the. Hey, there's Max. We know Max. We do. Hi, Max. Apparently, he's still in line at the Target Center or wherever he is in, up in Minnesota. I saw him tweeting about that last night. Waiting to see Taylor <laughs> Swift? What? No. I don't know what he's waiting in line for, but I think he's still in line. No, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. If you have questions, put them in the comments here. and uh, Don't put them on Twitter, though, because we won't see them. But especially Facebook, that would help because we need questions. Not comments. We need questions. Oh, we need and answers. answers. <laughs> You have questions, we have answers. We might have what, answers. what was that for? What commercial? I don't remember. That was a commercial for something. That was a commercial. Anyway, here we yeah. go. I have some in the inbox. We'll figure it out. We can do it. All right. 2291. We've done we a few it. of these. We got this. Here we go. Welcome to episode 2291 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope you're having a great week. I mean, how can you not? We have a three-day weekend here in the States coming right at you. So hang on there and we're going to get you through it with some listener questions and some fun Disney talks. So joining me today we have the OG crew, and I see some OG friends in the live chat. This is an OG day. So let's have an, I don't know, let's just have a great week. We're going to have fun <laughs> today. So joining me today from down in Atlanta, she hangs out over at themouseforless.com. We have Ricky. Ricky, happy Wednesday. What's going on? 
Um, I'm probably droning right now because I'm back at work. So uh, I'm working from home, but, uh, you know, back in the grind and probably definitely droning in a lot of emails, a lot of things that I have to now relearn how to do. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Hey. Welcome, to, welcome to the real world. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you think maternity leave lasts forever? No, it doesn't. So, <laughs> no, but it was a good time. I enjoyed my time with Lucy and, uh, you know, I'm ready to get back into the, the working world and, and, and do that. But um, definitely tough to, you know, start to, to leave Lucy, but um, she's, she's going to do just fine. So that's good. Well, before you know it, because I see one of our speaking of OGs, we have right. an OG friend here, Melissa Griffith, who lives, I, I mean, literally a hop, skip and a jump for the Magic Kingdom in the chat with us. We haven't seen in quite a while joining us in the live chat, which is great to see. I mean, didn't we just see like her, her, or her I older know. just finished school? It, it's it, so, it just makes me, yeah, it makes me want to vomit because I, I was in the, I was there, like I went and saw Haley in the hospital when she was right. born. So like, I mean, I, I kind of want to vomit. Yeah. Right. I remember like that day we were running, what was it? The wine and dine 5k or something. We were running something through like the animal kingdom parking lot or something. And we, I just remember, you know, when all that happened and, and like all of a sudden, you know, out of first kindergarten, first grade, I, I, I saw a picture the other day on Facebook. Was a so big. Through, but that's going to be Lucy here in like five minutes. So just get ready. I know. Trust me. I'm well aware of that. I'm not ready for Drop it, in. but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not okay with it. So. Strap in. Okay. Also joining us, we have the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel, Pam Forrester. And Pam knows I speak the truth because in two half days of school, my youngest will be a sophomore in high school. I mean, wow. God. I can't believe it because I'm only 25. What's up, Pam? Right. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy. It just happens. First of all, it happens before you even realize. You feel like you're your child's age. Like Mike, yeah. at times, isn't it shocking to you? Yeah. You're like, how can my child be this age? Because I feel like I'm this age. Right. Like I just, yeah, it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm very quickly but it's all it's a good ride as they say so I'm not ready for it <laughs> so let's get on the topic of of disney here and i want to ask pam a question off the top of the show before we we got some questions here coming into the live chat so please ask them in the comments we'll get to those amanda's got a great question about coronado and some transportation which we're going to hit in a second but of, of course the news of the past 72 <laughs> hours or so has been the close the announced closing of the galactic star cruiser at the end of September. And we talked about that on the live call-in show this past Sunday night and got some comments and just, you know, obviously talked about what we all thought was the why and what the possibilities will be for the building, you know, and stuff like that in the future. Nobody knows. No. Pam, you are the one that's a part of our show that got to experience it, I believe, twice. I think you went on two. No, just once. Just, just once. once. Yep. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm not going to say that you did the secret second one, but no. You only did one. <laughs> Tell us what your thoughts are because you, because I mean, so many people are, are giving opinions on this. I think that never got to yeah, you know, go inside it. the Halcyon and have the experience. So I, I just, you know, I think it's, it's good to have firsthand experience when you're talking about a topic and you have that unique opportunity. So can you just give us your thoughts on what you th think about it? Yeah. So Galactic Star Cruiser was actually one of the really coolest things I have done in terms of Disney. Um, it, and it's hard to really kind of, you know, explain why, but I posted on my Facebook page, there's a picture of Hannah who was playing cards and getting advice from Chewbacca. And I have pictures of Steve doing that and um, just different things. And I think what I loved so much about it is those moments happen, mm -hmm. you know, and where else can something like that happen? You always think of, I really want to, I wish I was part of a, a Disney story. I wish I could live in a Disney movie. I wish I could whatever. And I think this was your chance, your one opportunity to do it. And I think it was so brave of Disney to do this. I think that, um, you know, I hate to see this in general and it, I hate to see it with Disney because sort of Disney is so close to my passion, but there are so many people who love to criticize from the outside, right? And Mike, you know, I talked about this with our agents, like without getting in the ring and actually doing the things. This was sort of a brave thing for them to try. It was something different. And I think 
that you can't look at experiences as this failed. You can look at it as they tried this and they learned some things from it. And maybe we'll see something like this in the future again. And maybe they'll take what they learned to do things, um, some things differently. But it was such a very cool thing to even see them attempt. And gosh, wouldn't you love to see the thing that you love most about Disney? Like say you have a Cinderella fan in your family. What wouldn't you do to let that Cinderella fan experience something like that? Well, that's sort of what the Star Wars thing was like for me. Like I got to meet those people and I got to meet Chewbacca and I got to do those things and I got to have those experiences. So I really, you know, people have reached out to me since then and said, I, I, I was on the fence. I thought I'd have more time to experience it. I think this is a pretty, you know, um, just sort of a, a harried decision maybe, you know, it was a quick decision to make this happen. And there is still time to do this, to book it. We can't price right now. We'll be able to price at the end of the week but to experience this before it goes away. And if you're a Star Wars fan, I would consider it. It was just one of the most immersive things I've ever done from the food to the interactions to every, you know, everything about it. It was just a great experience. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that. And like, you know, what my conclusion with this, you know, and again, I've never done it, but watching it from kind of just a, a fan perspective and, you know, seeing what I've seen and, and I've heard from a lot of folks who've done it, a lot of guests, and, you know, like, for example, we have a, we have a big fan of the show, Dr. Kai, and his daughter's huge Disney fan. He is as well. And they are definitely going to do the when they heard the news, man, he was like, we got to do this. Got to do it now. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a piece of Disney history that's gone. You know, it's like yeah. Yeah. you have to do it now or it's, you know, you're never going to have this experience again. He's like, you know, my daughter, Ella, she's totally into Star. I mean, she's huge star wars fan they love doing like the conventions i mean this is just up the rally that that you know really role playing kind of you just can't get that anywhere else and so yes this is exactly what they need they need to seize the day and do it you do I've had a couple of guests reach out and do that and i mean that's exactly what has to happen and you know it's, it's one of those things i kind of came to the conclusion by the end of our live call-in show and you know i, I had an open mind i don't even know what's going to happen but by having the conversations with a bunch of our listeners throughout the show I think what I've decided is maybe this is kind of like a chapter book and this is like the very cool chapter one and chapter yeah. one has come to a close, you know, and this might be a three chapter book. It might not be a big long book, but you know, we might have to take a break here for a little bit and chapter two is down the line, but it might be three years, five years before chapter two starts, but they've learned a lot, you know, yeah. and, and chapter two is still to be written. You know, but I mean, chapter two could be better than chapter one. You know, who knows? Yeah. when you try something like this, when you try something new, you either win or you learn. And that's all there. I mean, if you aren't going into it with that kind of mindset, then you're really limiting yourself um, because then you'll never try things that might fail. And I, that's a big mistake, a big, big mistake in life. And I have to just like that old adage that like, don't be sad. It's over. Be glad it happened. And I'm so glad it happened. And I'm so glad I experienced it. Is it for everyone? I'm sure not. It, I'm sure it's not for everyone. But if you have someone in your life that really loves Star Wars, I would consider, even if I didn't love it so much, I would consider going with that person who does love who it does. that much because if you see a, like, you know, you know what it's like when some, when you love someone and you get to see them experiencing something like this, something that they love, then it's really kind of a cool thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And that picture of, uh, of Hannah with Chewbacca. I mean, I know. I mean that is just that, that, that it's unbelievable. Like, it I mean, like she's in the movie. It's crazy. It is. <laughs> I know. It, so. And you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me um, of something that, you know, they had talked about, years ago and, and it wasn't until you guys started talking about it that it really reminded me of it and that was with that whole you know other project that maybe didn't go quite as well as they had hoped uh but maybe they brought that into the galactic star Cruiser. Yeah. but the the um the idea of the you know the, the characters would be able to interact with you and they would know your name and you remember what that what that was supposed to be part of that next gen project mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know maybe it, it's not exactly the same idea uh where they're able to you know call you by name uh but it it kind of maybe they took what their I, initial idea was from that and then incorporated that into the star cruiser and then maybe maybe in the future we can have them incorporate that that kind of aspect into the parks like you said pam you know where they, you know, you do have Chewbacca actually getting the opportunity to play with, you know, 
you know, mm-hmm. sabak with, with your, you know, kid or whatever, you know, yes. something like that. Like yeah. that would be a really cool thing to be able to do. Um, and maybe they'll be, maybe that's something they learn from this, you know, Hey, we can do this in a different way in the parks. And hopefully that's something that we can do. And maybe they'll be able to bring some of the things that was in the galactic star cruiser into galaxy's edge, because we know that a lot of things did get cut from galaxy's edge and actually ended up in the star cruiser. So maybe they'll now take some of those things because they already have like the idea of them and they'll bring them into the parks as well. So, um, you know, that would be really cool to see, um, and I know that the rumors were that obviously they couldn't bring a lot of the characters from the original trilogies and stuff like that because it was set in that seven, eight, and nine from Galactic, you know, because of Galactic Star Cruiser. So maybe we'll get to see things like that come into play too now that, you know, unfortunately it's closing. Um, but maybe maybe it'll open, you know, ga- Galaxy's Edge up to that as well. So um, like you, I, I mean, I wish I would have gotten to experience it. Uh, it was a little pricey for, for someone who's not, a Star Wars fan uh, who just wanted to experience it because it's Disney, but I still think it's a really, uh, like you said, Pam, I think that they got to learn a lot from what they did and that's there's always something valuable in that. Yeah. And I really wish, especially in the Disney community and the world at large, um, that there was more room for trying things that mm-hmm. haven't been done before without at the end having a group of people be like, I knew it. I knew that when we work and all that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because like, think of Walt, like if oh, you yeah. are a true Disney fan and you aren't going to allow the company to do things that, and then to take a step back or to change or to whatnot, then I don't, I, I can't, feel like you're embracing what the company stands for or what Walt originally wanted to have happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not one of those people who is like, I know what Walt wanted to happen. I'm not, I'm not going to speak to that, but I will speak to the fact that to be innovative, you have to try things that will occasionally not perform or not work the way you thought. That's true. Well said. And now we got to answer some questions. All right, let's get to it. Let's do it. Amanda's got a question here. She's from Saratoga Springs, New York, the town that is named after a Disney resort. <laughs> what Start is the, the rumor. Nation like from Coronado Springs, a standard room, not the Grand Estino Tower. First of all, I like the transportation at Coronado because the resort itself is very centrally located to all four theme parks because it's right there at the corner of uh, World Drive. And is that uh, Buena Vista right there? Or is that? No, it's Epcot Resorts. It's, it's I don't right know. It could not be it. more centrally located. Right, exactly. right street from Hollywood Studios, which yeah. is right next to Epcot. I take Western right Way. I drive past and, it. So yeah, yeah, it's Western Way. Yeah, oh. and uh, and also it's I mean just right down from Magic Kingdom, and it's very close to Animal Kingdom. It's yep. very close to all four ho- uh, theme parks. Um, the if, of course, if you're in a standard room, you have the four stops, so you have a stop right next to you. And it's I mean you got to go to all four stops, but it's not a big deal. It's really not. I mean, you you're gonna start have to at. You start at uh, bus stop two, then you go three, then you go four, then you go one, which is totally the tower. I mean, to who go, wouldn't know that? Yeah, I mean, to, <laughs> yeah, to go right. to the park. I know. I looked it up from when I saw the question because I knew there was a set way. I couldn't ever remember what it was. Um, so actually, it starts at two, and Grand Destino is actually the last one on the way to the parks. But if you're going to Disney Springs, to keep you on your toes, it goes one, two, three, four. So weird. That's okay. Very, that's that's a deep deep uh, get right there for that a, is. For the show. Now you know. <laughs> the NBC thing. The more you know. Right there. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> All right, Max up in Minnesota. What's your favorite Epcot snack when you visit the park? There's so many great options. I have a new one. It's in caramel kush, and it's not the caramel popcorn because I'm not a fan of caramel popcorn. But I had this like what was it last time? It was like a um. The caramel Man, bar thing. Yeah, it was like a car. Yeah, I don't. It, it, I don't even know if it had a name. Like, like a. I was trying to think of it had like a super specific name, but it was just like a. It's it's in the the little glass confectionery yeah. case, and it was like a. It was almost like fudge, but it was like a caramel bar. It had caramel on top and some chocolate, and it was only like four ninety nine. It was a really good deal. That'll be a snack on the. Uh, yeah. on the- <laughs> but it was dense. I mean, it's it, it feels like. It doesn't look real big, but it's it's thick. I mean, it's it's dense. It's one of those things it's like fudge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a little goes a long way, especially if you're eating it in July or something. I mean, just buyer beware. Like 
you don't need a lot. <laughs> you might think, I need two. No, you don't need two. No, you just one. need one. <laughs> yeah, trust me, one. And then if you need another one, go back. And <laughs> don't buy two thinking you need two. So, Ricky, what do you got for go to? All right. So, the problem with Epcot, let's just throw this out there first, is that there's always a festival going on. So, it's really hard for me to go get snacks all the time because, like, I'm snacking on festival food. So, like, that right there makes it so much harder. But on those times where I'm not completely full from festival food, I actually really like the um, pretzel bread pudding from uh, Germany. Um, it's at that little snack stand in the back. You can mobile order it and it is quite delicious. I'm not going to lie. Like it's so good. So it's sort of warm Pretzel and gooey. Pudding. Yes. Oh, it's weird. so, so no, it's delicious. I'm telling oh. you, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Check it out. We're two for two for Germany right now. The, yeah. Right? What, are the yeah. Chances? I mean, what are the chances we'd even have one snack from Germany? Right. Now we got two. two right now. That's unbelievable. Right. Pam, go for the beer and we're in. Well, I do like the beer, I will say. I mean, on a hot day, you can't beat a Shafa Hoffa. I was going to say, it's a great for beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I just said beer with a B-I-E-R, just for the record. Just oh, my God. Go ahead. Yes. I can tell in your pronunciation. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a place we've been going lately. Um, in Morocco, there is a little snack stand that sells drinks and, like, Moroccan cookies. They have, like, three or four or five different incarnations of, like, almond flavored cookies mm. they are so good you can buy them in a little container and like get three for i think under ten dollars it's okay. some insane amount so by the way my friends go for the three yes. <laughs> love yourself a little bit in this space get the three i'm gonna tell you you're gonna like them um but i love almond flavored every everything almond flavored anything and these cookies are the place that we um, tend to stop at often. So. Is this the place like if you're walking from, say, America towards France, it's on the right? It's like on it's the, on the left. It's on the lagoon side? Yes, it's on the lagoon side. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yes, like on, yes, it's, like, yes, it's, it's on, on the lagoon the, side. Yeah, we are left or <laughs> the right. We're not good at that yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it, it's, it's that little place there. Um, yeah, so I've seen that place and I've wondered about those little desserts and snacks and cookies and stuff. Yeah, I've never they're stopped. worth trying. I'm eyeballing those cookies. I'm like, mm -hmm. I wonder if I would like those. They're not like a super like over the top sweet thing. So if like that's yeah. your dessert thing, <laughs> not, but these are good. And if you like almond, they have a lot of choices. So because the thing is, it kind of stands out there by itself. Like it's it almost does. like on an island. There's nothing around it there. It's like, hmm, I wonder if I should get it. Because the next thing you're kind of up to is like that Japan. If you're walking like from the opposite direction, like from france towards america like you'll hit that then you won't hit anything until like the japan you yes. know like Food and wine festival booth or you know flower and garden i've always thought cookies to help you to help to you, get, you tide it. you over and then you get to and the next cookies. country yeah. i do love cookies me so. too me too i'm a sucker for it like too, huh? a fancy awesome. dessert or a cookie i'm probably gonna choose the cookie <laughs> i'm sold all right uh greg Zian says if we will be arriving at Epcot around noon. Should we still attempt for the virtual queue for Guardians at 7 a.m. or should we wait for the 1 p.m. drop? Getting there at noon. Should they go for 7 or wait till 1? Pam, what would WWPD? <laughs> I would say yes. Try for it anyway. No, um, which one? I, mean, I would say seven, try seven, for seven. the virtual. Try <laughs> for it at 7 a.m. I knew that's where she was going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's what I would. I would, and you know what? If I ended up getting a time that was too early, I would try to um, alter the time. Like I'd go, I'd visit guest services and see if they could help. That's a good point. They might be able to help you. Good point yeah. too. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'd probably go for that seven o'clock time slot too. I mean, I'm not awake at seven. Well, now I am, but you know, I'm not usually awake at seven, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you're not yet. Okay, next question is from, uh, let's see, it looks like Olivia. Uh, it's from Ricky, but it looks like it got forwarded the other day. Yes. So it says, okay, I'm taking my mother-in-law to Disney for the first time in July and would love some dinner recommendations. She's 60, not a big Disney theme person, so I was thinking Disney Springs possibly. Loves live music, loves a Bloody Mary or a margarita, picky eater, but can order a hamburger or nachos anywhere and she'll be happy. Thanks so much for your help. We love the show and listen twice a week when episodes are dropped on the way to work. Well, wait, only listen twice a week. We put on shows four times a week. What about the other three days? 
<laughs> Which ones get cut? I know. I know Thursdays are a little crazy because of the calling shows or not everybody's cup of tea, but give it a shot. We try hard. And then we do trip reports on Monday. I mean, we've had Australians the last two weeks. Awesome. I know you don't like me, but this is for the accents. The Australian accents have been awesome the last couple of Mondays. So come on. That's fun. Just kidding. All right. So I'll let you guys take this. Pam, give so it doesn't have to be um Disney Springs, but that might be a destination. What do you think? So there were a few things that stood out here in the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> like music and Bloody Marys. Yeah. And House yeah, yeah, yeah. of Blues brunch is, is true. Is, yeah. is, right? <laughs> that answer was just like out there waiting for me to pluck it off. Um, it was <laughs> low hanging fruit, as they say. No, that seems like a great place to enjoy both. There's so many good places, though, to eat. Of course, at Disney Springs, I think the Boathouse, where you're going to be able to find a good burger for mm -hmm. sure and a good drink, um, give that a shot. Um, but just the plethora of choices at Disney Springs sometimes is mind boggling. I it's Like you could just do it. And if you'll eat a burger or nachos, then you're going to be set in what, 80% of restaurants? Yeah, I'm just, you know, that's the way yes. to go. I do like. I'm a City Works fan too. At Disney Springs. Just, oh, 100. Um, percent Yes. But she likes. She's picky eater, and she likes hamburgers and nachos. Like you could. You go City Works, and you could right. Get, uh, and you know, Melissa in the chat is is <laughs> coming with up another really good answer. Homecoming. Homecoming they have a yeah. great Bloody Mary. Um, they don't have live music, but they do have a great soundtrack. I'm telling you, every time I'm sitting in there, I'm like, dang, if this isn't the most homecoming song I've ever heard, and then you hear the next one, and it's the <laughs> same one. It's the same, like, all the time. So, yeah, for sure. The comments are coming way too fast today. I'm trying to keep up, so I'll, I'll, I'll be on it better. Okay, Ricky, give one more recommendation since you sent this question in. So, I actually <laughs> already gave her my suggestion, which was yeah. the Boathouse. Um, so, I, I think Pam and I are in the same wavelength with that because I felt like the Boathouse has such – they have such unique food but also such good, you know, home good food that I think that mm -hmm. it's a really good choice. Um, and you've got the you, – where you can sit out by the water – um, but then I did mention to her, you know, if she's looking for margaritas, there is the margarita like bar, basically, that's not that far uh, from the boathouse. And you can go and just sit by the water. They still, a lot of times have live music there and you can just mm -hmm. hang out and chill in a like they have comfy chairs. And so that was kind of like my suggestions to her is to go to the boathouse and then go to the margarita bar later. So. Yeah. We got some suggestions in the live chat too for some uh, other snacks around Germany or not Germany. Uh, around Germany, not, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, Tim says he likes the pretzel in Germany. Um, Amanda yeah. backed you yeah. up though, Ricky, about the pretzel bread pudding. Uh, so good. And she says, easy to miss. It is easy I to miss. miss. I miss it because it sounds gross. Like just the what? name. Uh, no, oh, it's delicious. And like when I think of like pretzels, and it's put, not, like, pretzel it's, and pudding like those no. two do not go together like have you never like had bread pudding food. i do not i don't think so bread pudding <laughs> isn't pudding no i don't even know what you're talking about like no i've never it's had like it. a custard base it, it's not pudding yeah i don't know no. i don't think i've ever had that Maybe we need try to try it. bread pudding someday somewhere. we're gonna take yeah we're gonna take you somewhere that has bread i mean the place that has the best bread pudding is ohana but you know yeah, I don't think I've ever had that. Um, oh, maybe Raglan Road has really good. Ooh, bread Raglan bread. Road. Mm. Yeah, okay. Melissa's right. It's like soggy bread. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like French toast, but a little bit different. You like French toast, not, See, you're then you like bread, bread pudding. pudding. It's kind of like it's kind of like a custardy bread uh, French toast. All right. Yep. Well, That's Jay uh, yeah. likes maple popcorn in Canada. Now, maple popcorn in Canada That's is really Jay good. And our friends. That sounds really good. All right, Scott, one of my good buddies down in Tennessee, I believe, says, what's the best buffet in all of Disney? Does Cabanas make the list? Cabanas. Over oh, at the Swan and Dolphin? I'll say that's on a boat. I was I mean, thinking the boat, too. Uh, about, let's just talk about Cabanas on the, on the dream. That's what I'm thinking of, on the ship. I mean, My best buffet in Walt Disney World is... Beer garden. This is a Germany Today show. Is not about the German East German uh, Department of Tourism. Come see uh, Berlin Wall from 1980. Oh my gosh! Uh, no, it's Beer Garden. I love Beer Garden. It's got it's got lots of meats, good desserts, and the Umpa band, which it's apparently you can't get up and mm. dance anymore. But I'm not much no. of a dancer, so it's all good. Unless you want to make a TikTok. No. So there. In, in my world, when you have a 15 year old living in the house, all you hear around here is. 
that means the TikTok is being made somewhere in your vicinity. <laughs> just, for, just so you know. Ricky, you'll hear that soon. Okay, Ricky, what's your best buffet at all of Walt Disney World? The people that have teenagers know the sound. Go ahead. Got it. Um. Okay, so I'm I'm going to... I think I'm going to stay in Epcot and I'm going to say Garden Grill. I love their, their, it's not a buffet, but it's, it's like an all you care to eat smorgasbord of food that is brought to your table. So it's even better. Um, You know, it's, it's, I like it for breakfast. I like it for, you know, dinner. I, I've never had a bad meal there. It's like the dinner is like Thanksgiving on steroids and then breakfast is delicious. It has Mickey waffles and oh my gosh, that, Again, it's it's the, the cinnamon bread that they have. At the, you know, it's kind of like bread pudding, but not really. Um, so I'm going to go with with Garden Grill. That's my, like, whenever Brian and I are there at Epcot, he's like, can we get a reservation for Garden Grill? So that tends to be our favorite. Tanja backs you up, but you guys are both wrong. That's not a buffet. It's a family style. I restaurant. know it's family style, but it's kind of the same idea. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, so I so are we talking an all of Disney <laughs> vacation universe like because I, I want to say Marceline Market if we're talking an all of Disney oh, universe true. of Cabanas I was no could idea. be I have no idea because the show I didn't know the show was going to be sponsored by Germany but when we started <laughs> it, but it, apparently it just turned into that I have no idea what the show turned into I'm going to say Marceline Market I'm going to say if if the question was is Cabanas on the list then I will say yes. And so is Marceline Market because I really like that. I, I like how the food is prepared there. I like the little areas and there's lots of Disney history on, um, you know, in that restaurant on the Disney Wish. So I'm going to go with that. All right. All right. Tim has a good answer in the tu- in Tusker House. But let me mm-hmm. let me update it. And I'm going to go with Boma then at Animal Kingdom Lunch because that is a true buffet. Oh, okay. Yes, this that is, that is a true buffet. buffet. You walk up, it's like Duff's back in the day in St. Louis. You walk up, you grab a plate. You walk, it's like Ponderosa. That is, that is a true Ponderosa buffet. It's kind of hybrid because you would order like a steak and then you would That's... go get your stuff off the buffet too. It's kind of both. Yes. Um, yeah, but I would not want to like I would not want to compare any of the Disney buffets to Ponderosa. No, I'm just gonna I say, love Ponderosa. Yeah. I love Ponderosa. No, no, no. no. I'm, with I'm with Pam. No, 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 no. 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 We're not like, gonna do that. You've got the delicious <laughs> You've got, you could, I you mean, could get like for seven ninety nine, you could eat all you want and got like a, like a, like a, yeah, no, this, this is not <laughs> selling it for people. <laughs> what was the cheapest steak? It was called the Chuck something ground. I, I, don't, I don't want the cheapest steak. I don't want the cheapest steak <laughs> either. Like a hamburger <laughs> without a bun. No, no not, not, no. A not a steak. Not a steak. Not a steak. Not a steak. No, we're going to move yeah. on. Move on. My poor buddy, my poor buddy Steve, that has passed on a few years back. Uh, yeah, he he worked there, so I got the hook up there. So anyway, oh. okay. Next question. Let's see. Um, we had a question about a hack here on buffets. Did we? Um, I, yes. <laughs> I believe Kate's over. I think she's. It was not good. I don't know if she's over. Steve. your hack, my friend. <laughs> if I want to do buffets, I think you've talked about the hack of going at ten fifteen to get both breakfast and lunch. Will this work with a very picky seven year old? I mean, I don't know why not. The trick is you just got to get that ADR that's very late into breakfast. And mm-hmm. when they swap over, you just got to. And the thing is, it's kind of discouraged because, you know, the waitress, the, the wait staff wants you to get in and out. But I mean, you are entitled to, you know, stay. At, you, you, you just got to be call you a camper. You, you don't want to be a camper. But I mean, no. yes, yeah, so if you have the very last breakfast one, you could probably yeah. get one. Okay. Yes. If you want you. That's probably more be. like I'd be looking at more like that 10 30 time typically depending on when the restaurant switches over yeah that's and when you're saying. making the ADR and actually looking in the app it tells you the hours for each um yeah. at each different restaurant it'll vary a little bit but yeah I think absolutely um there's no reason not to do this and I don't know. There's a little bit of you know in the buffets they always have a kids area which has foods that I think most picky eaters will enjoy. Now everyone has their own qualifier for picky, right? Um, so they'll be like, I'll be like, there's chicken fingers and pizza. Yeah. My kid doesn't like you both of them. I'm like, okay, well, right. I mean, but I'm guessing a buffet is actually really good for a picky eater. So. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, it was crystal palace, right? That was yes. the one. No. Okay. So breakfast ends at 10 45 
and lunch starts at 11. So if you had like a 1030 reservation, 10, I mean, you know, 1035, somewhere around there, then yeah. You, well, I would have it just probably a little, a little bit early. So that way, like the 1030, 1020, somewhere around there, just so that way they have time to seat you and then you sit yes, at breakfast. Yeah, I agree. But, and a lot of times they'll like bleed over breakfast items on the menu with lunch items so they'll you know they'll but you know out. those lunch items are going to be fresh 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 i know that's true awesome. your breakfast items may not be so fresh <laughs> <laughs> And William, William uh, Norgan brings up a good point. If you're going to, you know, kind of wait over those, you know, that little switch over time, I, this is obviously, you know, tip your servers well because you're taking yes. up a little bit of extra time to so take care of them because, you know, you're taking a little bit of extra time there, obviously. And I do eat the McRib as well as I like Ponderosa. <laughs> back off, the McRib is the, the seasonal uh, joy, you know, it, it marks the time and place of the year. You know, it's almost like, uh, you know, the first snowfall of the year when the, when you see on social media, and apparently it's not coming back this year, which is just kind of a gut punch. Um, so I'm we'll glad for some, I'm tired. For yeah, some. yeah. And for others, I'm like, oh, they learned their lesson. They did. They did. So, again, today's show brought to you by the Germany Pavilion and the G Germany uh, Department of uh, Tourism. But how much better would the Germany Pavilion be if they created the Rhine River? Uh, I mean, at this point, we'd never leave the pavilion. It sounds this like is true. Maybe, We'd be snacking at caramel kush, eating bread, uh, pretzel pudding, and, <laughs> having a shawl for hot. Yes, ride and ride. it that would be like good. it would be like our love for Mexico just in Germany now at this point. Like they should have totally it's built. It's true. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Anyway, they'd, it, they'd be some of the most popular. Yep. Um, the most popular land in Epcot. People would know what the, the bread pudding is at that point. Then people yeah. would know. Yeah, you'd never be able to get it again. No, I, I wouldn't. No, that's true. That's true. All right, we got a question here from Barbie. Hey there, I recently discovered your podcast and love it. My question is about traveling to Walt Disney World in May. Next year, my husband and I are taking our two kids on our first Disney cruise, the Disney Wish. We are so excited. We want to add a resort stay in park days before our cruise, but I recently read something online about how May and September are love bug mating season in Florida. <laughs> It's a good thing we have some Floridians in the chat too. This this show is just wild today. I, I don't know what happened, but I'm totally not like they, they seem to off the rails. I should pre-read all these questions in like some kind of order. Anyway, there were a lot of comments from travelers who said they will never go back to Florida in May because these bugs were such a nuisance. Do you have any experience with this? Do you recommend picking a different month to travel to Walt Disney World? Thanks in advance for your help, Barbie. Okay, uh -huh. here's my experience with love bugs. Because I have been there in May because that's when cheerleading championships happen. And I've been there in September for races. Yep. These bugs are wild. They you are. don't see them a ton, but they're the weirdest things in the history of the world. Yep. It's like, was there like not, and I was, again, this was past my time, right? But I was a teacher. I was a sixth grade teacher at the time. Was there not like a cartoon called like cat dog or something? Where yes, like, there was. was. You had was. like kind of cartoon. Like it was like yes. a cat on one end and a dog on yes. the other. My, my sixth graders would draw this thing all the time for like six months. Like, and I was like, stop drawing it. I'm teaching you science today. You know, like that kind of guy. And there's no cat dog in science. For real. Quit drawing that stupid <laughs> cat dog thing. That's what they're like, dude. It's like, it's like a bug with two, like a, like a head on each end, but it's, yes. it's two bugs that are joined Join together. They're, yeah. they're trying to create Friendly. a family. Yeah, they're yeah. Trying, trying to create a family. Um, oh my gosh. It's the weird, they are, they're not all over the place, but they're, <laughs> It's interesting, but there, I mean, I would, just, I, I would not reschedule a vacation. No, you know? me either. No, just, I would probably book a vacation because they're so cool. I'm just yeah. saying, I don't know. <laughs> not well, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> yeah. No, they're like, I mean, they're flying around, but they don't like land on you or bite you or no. they may land on you, but they don't bite you. And no. I would not reschedule a vacation. No. Um, the, the only thing that that stinks about them is, is if you have a car, you have to get it washed like ASAP because they will eat away at the paint um, if they if they die in your car because there's something that does that in, in their DNA. Um I actually went to uh, a few years back. We went to Daytona one time, uh, and I kid you not, there there's a wall, a glass wall that like you could see down by the pool, and I could that that wall was like covered in love bugs, like it was just a sea of black, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that's a lot of love bugs. I mean, they were flying around e everywhere at that point, but again, they're not like. Bad. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to. You know, love bugs. They could be like hate bugs. We have a lot right. more things in the world to worry about. It. You know, it could be like you know troll bugs or something. And I feel you know, like you could, have, 
way more maybe on the coast than you do. Uh, maybe that was just me at that particular time. But I, you know, I see a few of them in, in Orlando, um, but, you know, not like terrible, terrible. I mean, they're, they're still there, but, you know, don't reschedule your vacation. No. Go, go in May. May is a great time to go. I go in May and September all the time. Great times to go. Yeah. Well, just think of the TikToks you could make with them. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> next question and actually probably the last question of the day thank goodness because <laughs> you know, we're off the rails this show's this gone badly a, oh man mercy i'm just saying mercy right now amanda yeah. what is the best magic kingdom fireworks dessert party in terms of viewing location is the reserve standing location better than the tomorrowland terrace this one is perfectly on the tee for Pam Force. Yes, it, it is. is because I do this just to get the better viewing location. Yep. Um, so I prefer the um, standing in the, the, we, you know, used to call it like the Rose Garden sort of area that like was there. Um, it's in the garden area. Mm -hmm. They're in one of those little fenced off locations um, near the hub at the Magic Kingdom. And I like that better because I feel like the ones with chairs, there's sort of an overhang yes. on that viewing location and it prevents you from seeing some of the fireworks. Now, having a chair is pretty awesome sometimes. So you have to really sort of like think about what's more important to you. But I think the better view is absolutely going to be um, when you do the dessert party either before or after and then go to the viewing space. So agreed, 100%. Same. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, chair's great, but I mean, it's in the sky. You don't want to really have a roof. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you yes, don't. fireworks are sort of in the sky. <laughs> That's like, I always kind of laugh when they're like, well, my, like, you know, if someone like, there's a little kid standing there waiting, then someone tall comes up and they're like, excuse me, my son won't be able to see the show over you. And it's like, yeah, he will, because they're up in the sky. Like, <laughs> I get what you're saying, but, you know, there's no way you're going to clear out a straight path between your child and the castle. So um, everyone gets a good view. Thankfully, just don't I'm... hold up your iPad. Thank you. Love all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even, I haven't seen an iPad at the parks in a while. That's good. I'm just saying I, I inevitably <laughs> get behind the guy who's holding the iPad. I'm like, nobody's going to watch this. Don't Challenge worry. accepted for yeah. July. Okay. Thanks. Um, one last question because we have like 30 extra seconds. Here we go. It's from Mackenzie, one of my great guests over at the Magic for Less. Hey, Mike and rest of the crew. Thanks, Mike, for booking our family vacation coming up here in a few weeks. Excited. Now here's my question. Is it worth purchasing Genie Plus at Hollywood Studios? Most of our most of our party loves Star Wars. We're excited to get on the other rides as well. However, it does seem like a lot of the other rides there are individual lightning lane purchases. Thoughts. Also, would you recommend rope dropping, Rise of Resistance, Slinky Dog, or Mickey and Minnie's? They are all on our list. Thanks for all you do, Mackenzie. So, first of all, I say this time and time again, you cannot beat rope dropping ever. That is always, always, always going to be your best bet when it comes to getting the most attractions done in a day because you're going to get ahead of the crowd. So, yes, rope drop the studios. What I would do, now, so here's, that's what I would do. And what I would go to first is either Slinky Dog because Slinky Dog is not, it's not a queue you want to stand in the rest of the day, especially in May. You don't want to be out because it's out in the sun. Mm -hmm. I would do I'd either rope drop Slinky Dog or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway first. You're gonna now. The thing is, you could also you could also rope drop um, Rise if you don't want to buy the individual Lightning Lane. That's up to you. So you could do that. That's where you got to make the call. You, so you could go straight to Rise and probably I would say even if you rope drop it now, if you're there super early and you're in the very front of the group that's at the rope drop, you could probably get on in 30 minutes or less. Um. So that's an option, but that's what I would say. Now, would I buy Genie Plus for that day? Probably. Probably. Because you can get a lot done that day, knock out the whole park. Pam, thoughts? Yeah, there's only there's actually only one attraction in Hollywood Studios that is an individual lightning lane, and that's yes. Rise of the Resistance. Disney, I, I, they didn't get enough credit when they actually took away individual lightning lanes. I understand the price of Genie Plus fluxed some, 
but they took away some individual lightning lanes too and actually included them mm -hmm. in the lightning lanes that are available with um genie plus which i know is confusing because we have individual lightning lanes and then the genie plus lightning lanes that you yes. can access through that service i know it doesn't make sense and probably that's why it's confusing mm -hmm. um but every other ride then is available to you with genie plus and that includes um, Toy Story Mania and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and every other long, long, long named attraction in, <laughs> in Hollywood Studios. So you're going to get some good ones there. And I think Hollywood Studios, too, because you have shows that you can put in in between and things like that, that it is a good place for Genie Plus. So I would buy it. I think it's one of the best places for Genie Plus. I mean, to be honest, you can do... Genie Plus for Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, if it's open. I know it's re being refurbished right now. Um, you know, it's Slinky Muppet. Dog. Huh? To the Muppets. Uh, yes. Lexi. Yeah. Muppets. Yeah, of course. Uh, Slinky Dog Dash, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, um, Star Tours, uh, Millennium Falcon. You know, like you'll be able to get a lot of big attractions done. Um, so I would absolutely consider getting Genie Plus at Hollywood Studios. I think it's a no brainer there. So um, I would say if you want to get the individual lightning lane for Rise, do that. Get Genie Plus, um, get your individual lightning lane for Rise. And then I would do, I would, I would rope drop Slinky Dog and then make a, um, make a Genie Plus reservation for Mickey and Minnie. That's what I would do. So. All right. Well, there's the bonus question at the end of the show. So that is going to do it for today's podcast kind of crazy but kind of fun at the same time we love having you guys in the live chat because you guys take the show wherever you want to take it you guys took us over to berlin today and you took our breath away so we <laughs> always like that oh top gun reference for all you people who are young no idea but great movie from the 80s all right we are going to get out of here, but if you have a question, drop it into the inbox. Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. That gets it in the queue, but better yet, you can join us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch when we broadcast live. We're going to typically uh, broadcast around 545 Eastern moving forward here, uh, so you can join us live on those locations as we record, and you can be a part of the fun as we are live and getting your questions just thrown at us, and we answer them right away. Don't forget, our show is always brought to you by The Magic for Less Travel. Check them out. Just go over to TheMagicForLess.com. Of course, we are T minus seven days here in the studio right now. You know how NASA has that big countdown clock right there on press row. I have that thing right here in the office. It's like tick, tick, tick. And I'm sleeping less and less every night because I can just hear that thing in my head. It's exciting times. 2024 packages are getting ready to be released. I'm like the, the meme of a uh, striker trying to land the airplane in the movie airplane i'm sweating i'm getting ready i'm excited we're gonna make this happen we're ready to help you plan that trip we're gonna get you where you want to be in 2024 here in seven short days just swing by the magic for less.com you want to go to caribbean beach let's do it you want to go to saratoga springs and i'm talking the resort at walt disney world let's do it you want to go to polynesian sounds great aloha let's do it just swing by the magic for less.com felt the quote form We'll take care of you from there. Of course, you can still go on a Disney cruise. You can go out to Disneyland or Adventures by Disney. Again, magicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link, brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. That supports everything we do throughout the year. And speaking of support, our Patreon supporters allow us to add all this extra stuff. We've made our live streams that much better because of our Patreon support. Thank you so much for that. And our patrons get a bonus show every week. It's usually on Tuesdays called Mike in the Midwest. If you'd like to grab that, come on over to patreon.com slash be our guest podcast give ricky a follow on social media she's at ricky nibs r-i-k-k-i n-i-b-s pam's at t-m-f-l-t pam give her a follow i'm at be our guest mike instagram and twitter is where you can find us and of course we'll have the live calling show this sunday night even with the holiday we're going to have one it may just be me and you calling in but uh scotty g is going to try to join us and he may have a special guest up in the studio in michigan as well so give us a call sunday night and uh, we'll have a good time. We might take video calls. I got the phones fixed right after the show. So we'll have the phone line back open. So video calls, audio calls. I don't know what else kind of calls we can have. But we're going to have a good time Sunday night. So join us 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. It's the BOGP open line. We'll talk. And, and you know, hopefully nothing closes this week that we can talk about. Let's just talk about fun stuff. <laughs> who knows <laughs> it's still a long time till sunday but we'll see what happens all right we're gonna be back on friday we're talking about tough disney choices we'll each throw out two things we have to pick one but it's going to be summer edition so it's going to be like 
um uh let's see like uh like a like a like uh what are those called water wings or a life preserver which one no it's not gonna be like that but it'll be kind of, it'll be summer stuff at walt disney world so we're gonna have a good time with that to get you ready for the summer unofficial start of summer this weekend we're gonna get you ready on friday with a fun disney podcast so until then for ricky and pam i'm mike wish you a great wednesday stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you real soon all right, let me save that to one. You have to put summertime in the background. Oh, dude, don't let me forget because I do that every summertime. year. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, I do that every year. A little DJ. Is that is he, is it is he uh, not too hot to put in now? Is it good? I think you're fine. I think we're good. I think we've passed it. And we're mm-hmm. you know moving along from it. You win the oh You don't want to punish DJ Jazzy Jeff. Right. Of what I he mean, did. yeah. I do like yeah, I, I was listening, I was it's running up the day and uh, um, Nightmare on My Street came on. I got my play. Oh man. <laughs> Jeff, Too funny. Jeff, don't go to sleep. Oh, I'm your DJ now. <laughs> oh I'm talking about Ricky, probably. No, no, I have no idea. You gotta look up Nightmare on My Street by by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It's a it's a parody. I definitely don't remember uh, that it's a parody of Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh my god, no, I don't remember it. I'm your DJ now, Princey. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny. All right. I, said, I, I woke up and it was. It, I said, "Oh, that hurt. That was for real." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. <laughs> no man that hurt we got like summer we got summer vibes going on we're all feeling a little squirrely yes. oh, dude, that was so yeah that was really really squirrely uh, oh, that's, that's us good. yeah it was the second single from parents just don't understand oh gosh that, that is a great parents just don't understand <laughs> And that's and that's when it became a nightmare on my street. <laughs> I love the part though. You live with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. That was the best part of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> when he had his mom in her in her house coat. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> summer, summer, summertime. That is true. When you listen to the podcast on Wednesday, if you watch it on <laughs> watch it on Monday, it's probably not as exciting. I, no. No. We don't, I don't know that we trans. I think that we translate better in person than over the air. Maybe. When you can see us. Yes. And the faces that we make at Mike, like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like when he mentions Ponderosa. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, no, I'm, uh, I, I don't think there's any opening. Anymore. I don't. Thank God. Mm-hmm. So, just so you know, so we used to get ponderosa wings and take them to my in-laws for christmas eve until like two or three years ago like we get we'd always order 75 and take them out to her house there are so many other places that have better wings that nope. you could choose that's what we liked we like because they were kind of plain everybody liked them we dip them i have so many things to no say. now we get wing stop and they're way more expensive too well yeah it's wing stop we have a good yeah. place near us Be- Big shop bulbs. They have like a hundred different wing kinds. And here's the pro level tip, which we didn't even know. I think it was Georgia or someone came here and like saw it in the menu and suggested it. You can get wings, and then underneath the wings is a layer of fries, and they oh. put sauce over all of it. No, <laughs> when he was like, I want like order it this way, and I'm like, I, I don't even know what that is. And it came, I was like, Oh my! Why? Oh. Why have we never ordered it like this before? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, there's that. Okay. Yes, Fulton. Thanks for coming on the show last night. Fulton has the bomb diggity radio station studio. He came on video with us last nice. night. Nice. show and it was awesome. That's awesome. Do, 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 do. Oh man, I've been to Miller's Ale House. I went down there in 2003 with some cast member friends, and we ate there. And I think we have a Miller's Ale House nice. here in. Georgia. There's one, in, uh, there's one in Schaumburg, Illinois. I want the Agave Azul here. That place is so good. <clears throat> All right, I got to think of something here. Oh, wait, let me change the bottom third real quick. Because it's way easier to do now. Let's see. So, let's see. Tough Disney Choices Summer Edition. I need to put. Oh, I love this time of year. It's staying light later 
Mm-hmm. It's like you can go outside. The weather's getting better. Mm-hmm. All the above. Mm. Ooh, do, 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 do. Why is that? Show. Show. Show, 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 show. There we go. Okay. We all ready. The Claritin's kicking in because I can feel everything drying up. Like, Sounds like know, TMI. Like, even like, even like, <laughs> like, I feel like I'm getting dried out. Like, you can tell when that stuff kicks in. <laughs> you can see it happening, Mike. You missed it. You missed it, like, like probably two months ago. I was doing a live call-in show. Scott wasn't there that week, so it was just me. And, like, the last 10 minutes, I felt like I was getting a nosebleed. And so the whole last 10 minutes, I'm going... <laughs> But I'm trying not to make it like loud so it's not on the mic. So I keep pulling back. I'm like, because <laughs> you know, I don't want to like be like gushing blood down my mouth. Like, blood I'm, 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 to be a yeah, to the I'm live show. Like, so I'm like, I'm like, ah, video. Why'd I go to video? Like, you can just do Skype. Like, it was so much better when there wasn't no video. And I could like, I could just be bleeding. Like, right now, I'm just like be wiping my nose. I'm trying to like, now because I was the only one. So it's like the big old cameras on me. So I'm like, I could feel it. I'm on, like, I'm, on, I'm on video, right? So I don't like wipe my nose and look down and see like, oh my God, I'm bleeding. Yeah. So I was like trying to play it off for like 10 minutes. And then I ended the show like five minutes early. Cause I'm like, oh, oh I don't want to bleed to death on the air. Like that'd be, that'd be, uh, I mean, it'd be great for ratings, but it'll only be one. <laughs> <laughs> only one show would get that, right? Yeah, true. Anyway. All right, let's do this. Hard summer, cho- challenging summer choices. Right? That's what we're doing. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. There's someone at the doorbell in the A. Ooh, I just hit my goal when I'm sitting down. I love that. Yeah, you go viral once. <laughs> That's going to be my story. That's going to be the title of my autobi- my uh, biography because it won't be an autobiography because I'll be dead. Go away. Go away. Unless they're dropping off something cool. Okay. Are they gone? Uh, Yeah, Steve. Okay, I just didn't want the A talent like breaking in and saying like that. Last night we had a caller named A. Uh, I'm talking to her and the thing goes off because I haven't hot here in the studio yeah. i'm fighting you gotta watch the show or listen to it because i'm fighting with that while i'm talking to her on the air it was a nightmare because it wouldn't i know happen. i have one right behind me. me oh my god i'm like you can see it like there's the there's the echo there and it will show who's yeah. at the front door. <laughs> that's right well mine's just the dot the old cheap one i mean i forgot i had it in here and it starts talking i'm like oh my god stop <laughs> so the, the, the she's on the video call on the on the live call and it was such a mess I know I do need to rename it, but I'm, I just haven't thought about it because I, I forgot it was even in here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we have a caller. Hey, Art, would, would you like to? No, no, I no. would not. Anyway, I should, I think you rename it computer too, but we use that word too. So anyway, here we go 2293. Yep. Here we go. Welcome to episode 2,293 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Friday to you and welcome to summer 2023. Now, I used to say that with a little bit more ferv and uh, vivor there when I was a teacher because that was always exciting because that was, you know, I got to have the summers off but to all my teacher friends and all the students out there enjoy you have worked hard and all the folks that are on the east coast well you're about halfway to summer because you guys get out in like a month i know it's tough but you guys will go back to school till you know after labor day so it all works out but we're almost there you get to have some barbecues here in the states this weekend and we've made it the swimming pool is going to open around here this weekend and we're going to get you in that mindset with some tough disney choices but it's a summer edition here on today's show. So joining me today, we have the OG crew assembled again. Ricky's down in the Peach State, and you find her over at the mouseforless.com. Ricky, happy summer. What's up? Happy summer. Uh, I may or may not be at the beach 
uh, this weekend. So uh, I'm definitely getting in on the summer, <laughs> the summer vibes. I'm here for it. Yes. That's yes. That's pretty nice. Yes. So that'll I be like that. That'll be um, awesome. Not going to lie. I haven't been to the beach in a while, so it'll be fun to go. So. We're staying home and cheering on our Francis Hall Vikings baseball team as they take on the DeSmet, Spart DeSmet Spartans in the uh, state semifinals. Nice. Yeah, we will. Yeah, be hopefully, fun. hopefully, get another W. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, we're we're all about the the high school sports kind of determine our vacation plans, and we tend to have a lot of games because we tend to win. So yeah, we'll see That's how true. it goes. So hopefully we get a W and uh, we go to the Ozarks next weekend. So that'd be Ooh. even better because that's where the championships are down in uh, Branson. So awesome. That'd be fun. That would be fun. So yeah. we got to get past the smell, which I keep. Now here's, here's again what, you know, like Midwestern old dudes do. I keep reminding Mallory who, again, she's going to be a sophomore. She's just actually, she just finished her freshman year today. I keep reminding her that when I was, <laughs> this is what we do, right? Old dudes. I keep reminding her when I was in high school, and I was a sophomore. I beat DeSmet as a sophomore because DeSmet's one of the, it's a private Catholic, like really ritzy school in St. Louis. And they're great at sports. Like Jim Edmonds' son plays for the team this year. So, like, they have all the, they have all like the money and all the athletes, you know, the professional athletes' kids all go there. They're CBC. And I reminded her that, yes, when I was a sophomore, I was playing varsity and I beat DeSmet. And she's like, great dad that's awesome that's like, a great story dad man, i beat this man this is a good, great dad anyway so cool story it, cool it, story it, dad yeah, yeah. cool story and she doesn't care i'm like no. you don't understand they were awesome they're still awesome you know 58 years later i mean whatever anyway who cares live him out glory days glory days pam oh go to the magic for less travel steve would get it what's up pam <laughs> happy summer <laughs> Yes, every now and then Hannah just looks at Steve and she's like, Why are you so old? I, I mean, that's all I have at this point. You know, story. That, that, that one glorious Friday, uh, right along Interstate 270 on the Spartan Field. Uh, come on now. I know, but they made it bad here in my house because a few years ago they named Steve again to his high school's hall of fame oh my gosh so there was a whole to do and i'm like oh, oh my That's i know awful. and i was ill that day that he was getting reinducted so hannah went with him uh oh so she got to see uh, it all go down she got to see the whole thing go down so that's anyways, funny yeah dude that is epic now i'm nowhere near that level as <laughs> that is i mean they named like the school after him it's like steve the wing and everything that's that's no, unreal no. yeah Just <laughs> it was funny so anyways but welcome yes. to steve forrester stadium that's, that's so awesome yes I'm right wondering. the wing <laughs> <laughs> so cool all right so today we're getting you ready for summer and summer is a great time to go down to walt disney well of course it is hot but i mean it's hot in st louis it's hot in atlanta it's hot in pittsburgh i mean it's hot just about everywhere except We've had Australians uh, on the show the past couple of Mondays, and you know it's getting cooler there. So you guys are kind of winning there at this point. But I mean, yeah, I'd rather have hot than cold, to be honest. But let me ask you this, okay? Before we get into our tough Disney choices, which we are going to kind of throw at each other, we're going to throw two things out. You got to pick one or the other and kind of tell why. But Ricky, what do you like about summer at Walt Disney World? Like before we get into the tough Disney choices. What's one of the things that's good about Walt Disney World this summer? You know, everybody complains about the summer at Disney because like, oh, it's busy or hot or whatever. I just like to go and make the best of it. You know, the night times are actually some of my favorite times to go to Disney and the nights are not so hot. So I like to kind of just hang out, do some air conditioned rides during the day and then really soak up the atmosphere in the evening. And that's like one of my favorite things to do at, at Walt Disney World during the summer is just really enjoy the evening times in the parks. Cause it, you, you know, it's, it's just so, so magical in the parks in the evening. I call that the air supply uh, approach to seeing Walt Disney World. It's even the nights are better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Cool. Yeah. Cool beans. Way to go old man. Yep. Show continues from Wednesday, just saying it does never stop. It just rolls right on, except we're yep. not, we haven't brought up Germany yet. Okay, no, Pam, what, are, 
what do you say though about the summer at Walt Disney World? Because I mean, it's it's way different than going in January. I mean, besides for the heat, there's I, there is a different feel to a summer vacation. I feel. Yeah, Walt it's summer first of all, and I think everyone like is on a summer vacation. I think that that's a cool kind of thing. You know, you're on vacation, so that makes it that much fun. I think for everybody, the hours are longer. I think that that's a huge benefit that you get to experience those longer hours. You can go early, you can stay late, all of those things. But I think the thing that I like most about going in the summer is we are almost forced to go back to our pool, our resort pool and enjoy it. And we try to make an effort to do that anytime we go. But I think in the summer, it's especially easy to do that. Um, those are the trips where I'm like, okay, I don't care where I stay, but it has to have a good pool because I know we're going to use it. We're going to go back in the afternoon. We're going to swim. We're going to do that. We're going to enjoy our resort a little more. We're going to look for a resort that has like better resort activities. Um, and the other thing I say is people are always like, it's so hot in Florida. Let me just tell you in Pennsylvania, it's hot too. Once it's like 90, like the difference between 90 and 92, uh, I can't tell the difference. I mean, it's just hot everywhere. So um, that's why it's not that big of a deal for us to really go to Florida in the summer. It's just not that much hotter. So the difference is like, I mean, it's saying it, it's probably hotter in St. Louis than it is in Orlando most of the days in the summer. But if I'm at home, I'm sitting in my air conditioning all day True. long. Like I'm no. not sitting <laughs> outside, you know, unless like well, Riley, do you really have to go to the bathroom? Like, <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm begging with you, like, seriously, how bad do you have to go? Because I, I really don't want to go outside. It's the, the, the meteorologist right. just said it's dangerous outside. Come on now. But, you know, Walt Disney World, I am going to be outside because I'm going to be going to Epcot, you know, and enjoying stuff. So that is a difference. But you brought up the point I was going to bring is that, you know, when I go in, say, October or January or February, I'm not so worried about amenities like my pool or even my resort. A lot of times I'm spending more time in the theme parks, but I am when I go in the summer, like for example, when we go down in July, now we're, we're not staying very long, but I got a steal of a deal for three nights at the Grand Floridian because we're going to be spending time at that hotel at the pool, mm. you know, because, you know, and it, we're staying at Coronado Springs. So what I was going to do was, again, this is how I look at things. And, you know, I don't spend money where I don't have to. And you might say, Mike Rallman at the Grand Floridian, here's how I justified it, because I don't like to spend money that I don't have to. My girls haven't been in over a year. And I'm trying to reward, you know, Mallory's worked really hard at school all year. I never hardly get to see Paige. She's living in Chicago. She's really worked hard with her basketball team. Pam is a teacher who, you know, God, all the teachers are working so hard. They deserve something. They deserve to be, you know, pampered a little bit. I put a little bit aside for this vacation so they can have a good time. And what I was going to do was a deluxe on both sides, right? On, on the pre-cruise and the post-cruise. I was going to do something like an Animal Kingdom Lodge or like a Wilderness Lodge and like a Beach Club or Yacht Club, like on both sides. That's what I was thinking about doing. What I ended up doing was a moderate, but I did Grand Estino Tower pre-cruise and then Grand Floridian on the back end. And it's actually cheaper that way. But that way we can splurge at grand and do that because we've never done that. It's like a it's like a bucket list thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's got, you know, for those days, it was like there was a really, really good annual pass holder rate. And so we are going to do that. We are going to enjoy the pool. You know, obviously, we're going to go to the parks because they haven't been to the parks either. Like Paige has still never seen Galaxy's Edge. She told mm -hmm. me that the other day, which I can't believe she has. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to do that kind of stuff. But it's one of those things, you know, in the summer, we're going to take advantage of that. You know, we're going to be able to walk over to the pollen, you know, take the monorail, go over to the Polynesian and enjoy, you know, going to Captain Cook's or maybe getting a meal at Kona, you know, and just, but be able to have a break from being out in the, in the heat of July. So, you know, I think you need to think about that kind of stuff in the summer more than like, if you're down in January or February, you can be in the parks all day, and, you know, be fine with never going back to your hotel, but you have, you really need to have a break uh, in the summer. And you got those long park hours, so it makes sense to take a break because you can it go does. back to the evenings and stay out late. Okay, yeah. so tough Disney choices. So Ricky, lead us off. Give us a give us a couple things, and Pam and I will try to make a tough Disney choice. All right, oh, no. this, this kind of goes along with kind of what we were talking about. You know, you are out in the elements pretty much all day at you know at a Disney park. So 
um, when normally you'd be in, you know, the air conditioning at home. So obviously finding a space with premium good air conditioning is a very important key in <laughs> visiting Walt Disney World in the summer. So my first tough Disney choice is going to be Carousel of Progress or Enchanted Tiki Room for the air conditioning. Mm. Uh, I mean, I know... I know that I have a decision to make, but I want to hear what Mike has to think first. Mine's Carousel of Progress because, and I love Carousel of Progress. I'm going to be wrong. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but in the summer, dude, I, I, I can never even make it to Valentine's Day. I'm <laughs> Especially if, like, it's like, if it's the afternoon, good night. Like, I just want to, you know, I want to make it. I mean, the 4th of July, there's no way I make it to the 4th of July. I mean, I'm lucky if I hang on to when, you know, the, the Valentine's Day is a good day um but you know hopefully i'm back uh, back conscious by christmas um because <laughs> i do like christmas I like seeing all the decorations because i'm a christmas guy but it's more comfortable <laughs> and there's something about like the little rumble when it moves like yeah like uh like a baby getting rocked to sleep or something i don't know it's like a cruise ship it, it's made for old dudes and naps that's i mean <laughs> it's like it's like a you know it just knocks you out you know especially when it's uh summertime but and it, i know it's not meant for that and like there's other things don't get me wrong i've seen the show a bajillion times and i love the show all the scenes i've seen them trust me i know them by heart and i love them but man on a hot day when i've been going for a few days it, it, i mean if i was going in for surgery they just need to like put me in there like boom <laughs> They could, just, yeah, they could just cut me open at that point and uh, we'd be good. So Pam, what about you? So I'm actually going to go Tiki Bird because I feel like the Carousel Progress AC is not as good as the Tiki Bird's AC. I feel like the Tiki Bird has better AC. And I think the other thing I like about it is that when that rainstorm comes up, for some reason, it just feels like cooler. Like there's an actual rainstorm happening in there or something, which I know for sure there's not. Um, but I really, um, I enjoy that. And um, I like them both though. They're both great spots to um, get it, you know, to get a little AC break for sure. They are good. Now, if you could have like a Disneyland, if you could have a Dole Whip in the Tiki Room, that might sway me because that was epic at Disneyland. I was like, I know. Oh, that was I know. testing that for a while. I, I was what? just gonna say the same thing. I thought they were testing that. Or maybe, maybe we can, but nobody brings it in because nobody knows that they can bring it in. I don't know. I don't I thought they were they were testing that for a while. So I totally thought I was getting away with something at Disneyland with my like I, I wanted one for both hands. Like uh, yeah. it was so cool. Like, yes. Right. It makes the show ten times better when you can have a dull whip. All right, Pam, go ahead. We got all right, so, uh, you know, there's always, we were just talking about the resort pools, and we always talk about the resort pools at the deluxe resorts, but if you were going to be staying at a moderate resort and the pool was going to play a big part of your vacation, which moderate resort would you want to stay at for the pool? Oh, so you don't Ricky? have two, you're picking out of the four, okay. Yes, so you got Coronado, you got Port Orleans Riverside, Port Orleans French Quarter. Oh, and, and Caribbean Beach. And Caribbean Beach, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I yeah. solved there for a moment. You're like, like wait, what? I got there's another one. Yeah. Wait, what? I, yeah, this is tough. I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with Coronado. Their pool is just pretty fantastic. I mean, you know, it's got the giant pyramid. Granted, you can't climb it. Don't climb the pyramid. Yeah, uh, I, can't, I can't believe we have to say these words. Uh, but uh, I, I feel like that there's something, you know, kind of cool about about that. Um, I think the other ones are really awesome, all things considered. But I, I think that, you know, it just feels... I was going to say it feels like a really cool summer vibe. Um, I mean, you can get probably that same summer vibe feeling at Caribbean Beach too, but um, there's just something kind of special about Coronado. Yeah. Okay. I'm like Coronado is my favorite moderate for sure pool. I just because we've always stayed there and we have a history with it. I just think it's uh, and I love the poolside bar there. The it's got good little hot items. It's got a fiesta a margarita there kind of thing, frozen margarita at the bar, and it's got little. Uh, it's got a hot tub. It's got a sand volleyball right there. It's got a little playground. I just, it's called the dig site. I love the dig site at Coronado. But I will say the coolest looking of the four 
I, they're all cool looking at the moderates though because caribbean beach is like swimming in pirates of the caribbean mm -hmm. yeah that's what i was gonna say now, it's a that? fantastic pool it is a fantastic pool i just haven't for some reason when we stay at caribbean beach we don't go to the feature pool very much and i have a huge now i do remember one time we stayed there a long time ago when mallory was little she went into the little kids area and you know how that bucket they have that big bucket oh yeah yeah pumps. She got under it somehow when she was real little, and that thing dumped, and it just dumped right on top of her and scared her to death. She <gasps> screamed and cried, and that was the end of that. You know how that is. So it was like, oh my god, mm -hmm. like it was, the world ended that day. So I had that we have bad memory there. It wasn't Disney's fault. Then you got French Quarters got that serpent, which I always have yeah. to a picture with when I'm running at Riverside yes. or French Quarters. I love that one. And then Riverside's pool is epic too. It's got, you know, all the stuff hanging over you when you're swimming, like the little, you know, like it looks like a, I don't even know, like a homemade little contraption to get water from one side to the other. And it's got muddy water, so a little poolside bar. So, yeah, it does. there's epic. lots of trees yeah. there too. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's got a lot of shade. I don't know. What about you, um, Pam? What would you pick? I don't know. See, I was, <laughs> I think that the Caribbean Beach Pool is one of the more impressive pools in that just seeing it, the theme is so over the top. They have that really cool kids area and um, each island has its own pool. Mm -hmm. So I think that's huge too. But at French Quarter, they have a really cool kids play area too, which I think is, um, you know, a really cool feature. Like you guys, I love Coronado. I love that pool. I love the pool area. And um, I, I think that Port Orleans Riverside has really cool uh, pool experience too that is it like old man river or old man, old man island? Island. Island. Yeah. Island. i'm thinking of the song old man yeah. river <laughs> 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 but and the playground's right there and it does have a ton of shade so i think for the moderate resorts disney really just did a great job with the pools i think mm -hmm. that they've really done all of them and it'd be really hard for me to choose but if i was going just for the pool i think i might do caribbean beach Good call. That's a good call. And William, he does say those buckets can just clock little kids. He's exactly right. I yeah. mean, that, that water comes down, man. It, oh, yeah, it does. That's yeah. uh, that's kind of crazy. Okay, mine is going to be a simple one. It's a staple for a cart snack in the summer that you got to eat quickly. Yeah. And mess around. Is it the, it's the Mickey bar or the Mickey ice cream sandwich? You got to eat one. Which one are you getting, Ricky? Oh, easy peasy for me. It's always the Mickey bar. I mean, 100%. I am always down for a Mickey bar. I love the chocolate that's on the Mickey bar. Um, it, it's much more flavorful than the, you know, the, the chocolate cookie sandwich. Um, so, I mean, hands down, it's got to be the Mickey bar. But you're right. You got to eat that sucker quick because it is going <laughs> to melt everywhere. You don't, You just hope that the, the cast member, like, doesn't mess around when they're making the trip. Exactly. You're like, come <laughs> on, let's go. It's melting. Clock's ticking. Yeah. Yeah, let's, like, let's roll. It's July. We can't play. No, <laughs> this isn't popcorn, people. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, what about you? Uh, those two, what, what would you go with? Uh, the sandwich. I think I like the idea of it. I like um, the. I I'm I don't love that the chocolate melts so quickly. Mm -hmm. I do like that the sandwich is sort of a you know uh, like it adds some. I don't know structure to the ice cream I get that. thing and so that's why i would pick the sandwich yeah i used to go for the mickey bar like that was my thing for like a decade but i switched probably about five years ago to the ice cream sandwich and have never gone back it, it's more substantial wow yeah never gone, back. never gone back i know no <laughs> but i'm with melissa too i wish they'd bring him the toll bring back the toll house cookie oh, yeah that was yeah. good that yeah. was so good it that was, was good. And, and, but they have those at the resorts so they do have those like in the, so here's the thing, like if you go, you know, Pop Century, French Quarter, Riverside, whatever, if you hunt in the food court, you're always, even Coronado, it's in the, it's in the Panchitos in the gift shop. Really? In, the back corner, in the back corner, there's like a little freezer, you know, just, yeah, yeah. You have a 7-Eleven really, if you think about it, where you pull it up and they, it's like they have a Ponderosa. Um, no, they don't have them there. But um, <laughs> you go in there and they have Mickey bars. They have, you know, the ice cream sandwiches. But they also, they do have the frozen Nestle Toll House ice cream sandwiches in those, I think. They did. I feel like okay. they're not the same like they used to be, though. I feel like they were better in, back in the day. I don't know why. 
Uh, Melissa says they do. That that's true. That they do have them, but they're not in the parks. Yes, yeah, so they do yeah. have them in, in those little freezers at the resort. But they, yeah, and they might not be exactly the same. But it's, here's the thing: like, if I really, really want one of those, yeah, that's true. you got to go all in. You go over to Sleepy Hollow and just get the big daddy, man. <laughs> one thing. Now that one you got to eat fast because that yeah. thing. Not only is it the size of like a pizza, it's also they put the ice cream between two warm cookies. Yes, it's so true. That's going you have, nowhere you fast. That's all kinds good of fast heat now. working against you, right? You have you have like the ninety-five degree July evening because it hasn't cooled off yet, and right. you have two cookies out of the oven between you know squishing the yeah. ice cream. You're just gonna wear it. I mean, you oh, may yeah. as well just like smear it all over your face and your shirt. I mean, yeah. just don't fight it. Ice it's cream cookie bath. Yeah. And that used to be, they used to have a version of it at um, Port Orleans too. Um, really? Yes, they did the cookie sandwich. Oh. Yeah. Why are we not eating these right now? Cause it's summer, it's 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 the, the weekend. Let's <laughs> ice cream cookie sandwiches all around. Let's go. All right. Uh, who had the first one? Ricky, give us another tough Disney summer choice. All right. So in the summer, you know it's inevitably going to rain, right? Like that's a that's just a thing. It's just it's going to happen. There's going to be a Florida downpour, and you're going to be stuck in it. So the question is, friends, do you do an umbrella or do you do a poncho? I'm going to go with Pam first. She's going to be like, I stay inside. <laughs> no, we do the umbrella. I feel like the poncho is a little personal sauna. Yes. I do not mean that in my life. We used to do the ponchos all the time. And then I was like, wait, I don't even understand. How am I 800 degrees hotter yep. in this poncho? And it sort of is like that. So we just do the umbrellas now. And I figure in the end, like none of us are going to melt. So I'm, I'm good with it. And sometimes in the summer... I'm like, none of it. Like, I, I don't even care. Like, bring on the rain. Um, so, anyways, yeah. <laughs> just, I just need some water. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike, what about you? I don't own an umbrella, honestly, in, in life. Like, I don't what? have one anywhere. The, well, so I do, I will tell you this. <laughs> I'm not saying this to make you jealous, Ricky, but the only umbrella that I do, I do have one umbrella. And I got it in this really cool way. When I went down... <laughs> This is such a weird thing. I shouldn't even say this, but I, I tell this to Pam because it's so funny. I got caught out in the rain at the Seven Dwarves Mine Train uh, media event. And this is how cool Disney is. Dude, they, the person who was like taking me over to ride the thing. Stop. Gave me an umbrella, dude. Okay, this <laughs> umbrella, this is the <laughs> thing. On the inside of the umbrella, it's got like a blue sky with like puffy clouds. When you when you open it up and you look inside, it's got puffy sky, like yeah. blue sky and puffy clouds. Yeah, that's my umbrella. It, but I think it's in Pam's car. I gave it to Pam because, like, I, I drive a Jeep. Like, if it's raining, I don't, you know, the top's down usually. But that's – and it's a big, like, golf umbrella. Like, I'm not taking that to Walt Disney World. I, I, I don't even wear a poncho. Like, I just – I take it like a man. If it's good – if I get caught out in the rain, I just get – Wow. Stuck. Wow. That's a that, – there's Line a line in the sand has been drawn. Yeah, it has. Yeah, no, but here's the thing. Like, okay, if I buy a poncho – because I don't never – I'm not prepared – so if I buy a poncho for like 10 bucks, it's that's going to be good for everybody else. Cause that means it's going to stop raining within the next five minutes. So <laughs> you want me to buy a poncho. That's good news for everybody else. At Walt Disney world. And I'm not going to have an umbrella. So I just like, ah, you know, if I got to go somewhere, I just got to get wet. I'll dry eventually. It's just, I'm not prepared. Yeah. So I don't do either. All right. I mean, I'm an umbrella girl. I think that's kind of where, you know, we figured. I agree with Pam. Uh, ponchos are like mini saunas. And by the time you get that thing unrolled and figured out and over your head and your arms, and it's, no, I'm out. Uh, and then you got to put it back in your bag and it's inevitably soaked. And so, you know, I mean, yeah, I can put it in a plastic bag, but no. Uh, at least the umbrella, I can, you know, just shake it out and be like, okay, it's dry enough and be done with it. Um, however, a few years back, I did go to the outlets and I did buy a, uh, a poncho or not a poncho, a rain jacket. Um, and so it's a Disney rain jacket. And sometimes if it is raining hard enough, I will bust that out. Um, just like if it's like sideways raining or something, I'll put that on, uh, just so maybe I don't get completely drenched, uh, with my umbrella. But I mean, again, that does turn into a sauna quite quickly. So I'm not like the biggest fan of it, but I do bring it if it gets like just sideways rain. Before before we go to Pam, real quick, what kind of, like if you see that rain is in the forecast, 
what do you guys go for footwear? Like, because I mean, I, I do change my like because I usually wear sneakers into the park, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But do you modify your footwear if you say, oh man, the, like you look in the morning, it's like a seventy percent chance of rain that morning, that you know, in the next like six hours, do you like so go to I, or what do you? Do? I have like a pair of shoes that like I wear all the time in the parks, and they're Skechers, and they are you know, they're actual shoes, but if they get wet, like it's not a big deal. Um, so that's kind of what I wear. They're sandals, they're sketcher sandals. And so they're fine in the water. Um, but then they're fine in the, you know, the heat of the day when, so I don't have to wear tennis shoes cause I don't want to wear stinky shoes and get, you know, my feet all sweaty with socks and stuff like that. Like my feet need to breathe. So yeah, I wear these sketcher sandals. So that way, like I have the best of both worlds. I just got some sketchers, the Tony Romos that you don't have to like touch to put your feet in. Oh, you there know. you go. Old man shoes. Good job. I know the commercials finally got yeah. me. like yeah. you know, bend over. You just take a step right into those suckers. <sighs> got it. You know, cool. Eventually after like a 50 second commercial, I'm like, Tony Romo, I need those shoes. <laughs> and what about you? <laughs> do you change? Uh, I used to do flip flops, but like they can get slippery mm -hmm. um, when it's wet. So actually what I've been doing lately, the past few times that I've gone to Disney World is I am... A New Balance tennis shoe person, um, they actually, New Balance makes a foam kind that is really breathable. And I actually find that I do not need to wear socks with these. And they are my preferred in the park shoe because it does dry really quickly. Um, I can wear them all day and my feet don't hurt. You know, there's all those things. As you get older, you have 3 million other um, considerations yeah. that you're going to make with footwear. Mike can attest to this as well. You get a lot pickier about it. Um, and I love these. It's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, they're not right here in the studio. I told you. <clears throat> they're comfortable man that's all that matters as i tell my wife i used to be all about like what they look like i mean don't get me wrong i do have some shoes that look cool yeah. but for for here in st peter's missouri oh, all about oh, man, <laughs> feet looking okay. and you're feeling good all yeah. right pamphlet should give us a tough disney choice all right so it is the summer you have the choice of two water parks at walt disney world Ooh. are you doing typhoon lagoon or are you doing Blizzard Beach? All right, All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go first. Yeah, uh, I mean, hands down for me, it's Blizzard Beach. I uh, I love Blizzard Beach. I think it's a great water park. Now, granted, I haven't been to the water parks in probably oh god, at this point, it's been something like 10, 15 years. Um, but uh, I I was actually supposed to go last year, and then I got pregnant, so I was like, mm, I'm not going to water park now uh so uh yeah i mean i i think that blizzard beach is is the key winner here and plus now they have in the kids area they got the frozen characters in there which is kind of fun and so I, I the only thing is is i won't do summit plummet like it's not happening um brian did it once uh, and he did it. It was basically, it was the day that we got engaged and it was because he's like, well, if I'm, you know, going for that, I might as well go for summit. <laughs> to look at it. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we, we've all, you know, we've done that, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with, with lizard beach hands down. Yeah. All right, Mike. I'm T L A D Typhoon <laughs> Lagoon all day. I love it because it's chill. It's more tropical, right? It's Blizzard Beach to me is hot, even though it's like the the Arctic theme, you know, right. the ice and chunks like that. It just feels hotter because it doesn't feel like there's as much shade. True. Typhoon Lagoon feels like it has more palm trees, more shade. It's got the crushing gusher. It's got the what's the Team Boat Springs? Uh, yeah. Is that still there? I haven't been there forever. Uh, We're gonna go there. No, gonna, did they take the Team Boat out? Springs is at, is at Blizzard Beach, right? Is it the big, yeah. the, big one, the big raft? Anyway, they have a, they have a few big raft rides, but I think do, we used to do. But the crushing gushers over at uh, yeah, crushing gusher is got the killer. The wave pool that just smokes you over at Typhoon Lagoon under the Miss Tilly. Um, but we're gonna go over there. We're gonna probably do one of those after hours parties. That's what I was supposed to go to last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're probably gonna do that. When we're down in July, but yeah, Typhoon Lagoon in the. I love the Lazy River too at Typhoon. I mean, I'm a lazy river guy at this point in my life but uh typhoon is pretty sweet so mm -hmm. i do like some typhoon like but blizzard beach is fun but you know my summit plummet days are i think they're past me i'm <laughs> I, i've done it a few times when Paige was little and i mean that thing it's intense 
it it is intense and yeah, I, is. I don't know if i need that level of intensity in my life at this point so i have nothing to prove pam what about you <laughs> i am going to type in lagoon i am getting a cabana <laughs> <laughs> I am enjoying the wave pool immensely. I love the theming there. I really do. I like the tropical theme. It sort of makes it even more summery than ever before, right? And it's just sort of a, an extension of my, like, I use the pool at my resort more in the summer. I think going to the water parks is really fun in the summer. It's not something that we do all year round, but I like it. I like the sand. I like the, you know, the whole experience. It just is really kind of a cool thing. So... I just, you know, like the whole thing. So I agree. Volcano Bay. Although no. that's where I was going to say, like, <laughs> can we Bay throw in Volcano Bay? Because yeah, Volcano right? Bay would be the one I would choose, hands down. It's really yes. fun. Yes, yeah. It's so amazing. That, even though I'm a Disney guy, Volcano <laughs> Bay is pretty epic. Right? It is. It is. Yeah. What, the, the Tapu Wingo or whatever? Ta what? Tapu Tapu. Tapu Tapu. <laughs> Tapu Wingo. It's a golf course around the corner. Oh my gosh. Uh, play 18 holes uh, go to Tepa Lingo. never have to wait to write a slide okay here's mine attraction you're going to go on in the summer now this one isn't just a walt disney world go with me here because we don't have many options at walt disney world that's going to make this one work at this point i was going to use splash mountain but all right oh, 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 oh. so cali river rapids or grizzly river run oh we, <laughs> i was trying to think of it like ah. air there where you go on it and you're like gonna get pretty wet i mean you could also throw in you know popeye and uh, bluto's at universal well, I mean, that not one. Gonna, yeah, not, <laughs> not make universal show either. no i know i know i know i know so uh, um can, can, I, can, pick? can i vote you, neither because i don't no, ride that on one i don't it, ride it, i don't ride those rides you because have to go on. it's summer and it's a hundred no i, no, I don't have to cool off which Look, I do not? not like to walk around in wet underwear. It's no, not, I'm not we okay with that. About it. <laughs> we don't hear about your underwear, but we just want to know it's hot and you've got to go on one of these attractions. I'd rather be hot than walk around like that. <laughs> deal is, you're not getting your next meal unless you go on one of these attractions. That's the deal. You can't leave the park unless you go on one of these attractions. Like they put up a big barrier. And unless you go on one of these two things, you cannot leave the park. Fine, I'm putting on a poncho and I'll go to Grizzly. Okay? Thank you. That's fine. I'm not even. No, I'm not even. I'm no. I'm not. But I'm not. In reality, I'm not putting on a poncho and I'm not riding either. So <laughs> it's not happening. All right, Pam. Which would you pick? I am picking Grizzly. Um, I think that I just like that storyline a little better and i like the scenery a little better and i like to see what i see i do i like the collie river rapids at animal kingdom i will say though um it feels short and they're probably both exactly the same but for some reason it feels a little short um but yes i i think that they're both solid choices for this uh, for the summer um but i like grizzly river rapids a little better honest to goodness um cali is I believe the only ride I haven't done at Walt Disney World ever, uh, ever. ever. You kidding? Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm almost positive that's the only ride I've never done. Yeah, you should absolutely do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, I've done. Did. I've done Dinosaur, which I hate. I've done Tower of Terror, which I hate. But I, I'm, I'm almost certain I have not done Cali. That's. I think that's the one, one ride I have not done. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it it that that ride is truly roulette. I mean, you could yes. I've seen people ride that ride and get off and be bone dry. Yes, I mean, literally, it, it is it, it is a game of roulette. It's it's like Thunder River at Six Flags, right? I mean, well, I used to work Thunder River. That's why I don't like to ride it. I literally one hundred percent roulette. I worked Thunder River, and that's why I hate that ride. So that that kind of ride, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not in. Yeah, I always get nailed. Like I because I I, I it, it's not fair. Now, do they still have the guns, the water guns, where people squirt you at yes. the end? That's the thing. Like, you can make it all the way through. Like, God yeah. smiles on you, right? <laughs> and you're like, I've made it all the way. Ha, 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 look at me. What up? You're all like, yeah, yeah. And then some seven-year-old punk kid gets on that elephant gun and <laughs> yeah. it tags you right there and you're dread. <laughs> As soon as they unbuckled me up at the station, kid, you better have a head start. I'm, gonna, I'm running I'm, after you. I hope you go to Yak and Yeti for lunch because I'm going to find you. you know, <laughs> pour a Coke on your head. Oh my God. Nice. And all that. 
but I could. Okay, let's go one more rapid round. Go ahead, Ricky. Go ahead. I'm probably not going to pour Coke on a seven year old. Mike got Mike got real mean there. Um. All right. I, so you know, obviously, um, barbecue is very key in you know summertime dining. So I am gonna say, and I think that this one's probably pretty easy. Um. But I'm gonna say. Uh, you have the choice of flame tree barbecue or polite pig. So, Mike, where oh. are you going? Oh, man. Both are I, so good. Maybe I did ask a hard question. That is a good <laughs> one. Polite pig has just a more extensive menu, though. And it's, it it, it's more upscale barbecue, I think, because it's, it's not at a theme park. Flame tree is solid, though. I mean, flame tree is really good for a theme park barbecue. But polite pig every time. I mean, overall, it's it's got better sides. I mean, mm -hmm. more options, and I mean, it's a it's a full blown restaurant where Flame Tree is a counter service restaurant at theme park. Mm -hmm. Pam, what are, okay. you agree with me on those points? Yeah, I'm going to polite pig too, just for those reasons. They have such an extensive menu, um, and they have good drinks, and they have an outdoor seating area, sort of right there, and they sort of have an an you can be indoors and still hear what's going on out there sort of in the walkway and i love that so yeah That's i will say the flame tree probably has better like overall like, was, environmental like exactly what i was going to say everest right ricky yeah. i mean you go with yours was that you're going to pick yeah that, i was going to say you know polite pig probably for the food but i, I mean flame tree 100 for the ambiance like the ambiance at, at flame at flame tree is it just can't be beat you know, I always sit down by the water and, you mm -hmm. know, I, that's just the best spot ever. So you get the breezes of the water and then you get to see Everest. And yeah, it, it, that's so I think if I had to choose, I'd probably choose Flame Tree just because I feel like both have solid choices in, in barbecue. But you got the ambiance of of, you know, Animal Kingdom there. Mm -hmm. And a couple things, Mich uh, William up in Oregon says that Plight Pig was mentioned in the new Michelin Guide and nice. also our first ever recording outside of the studios for the BRGS podcast happened at Flame Tree Barbecue. It sure did. <laughs> yes, it did. Crazy in 2009. Eight, nine? Eight. Yes, nine, eight. maybe. Yeah. Eight. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was eight. It was, it was Mouse Fest. Yeah, it was Mouse Fest in December of 2008. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I know, crazy. That is nuts. Yeah. All right, Pam, give us one last one. All right, so you're going to the parks. And you have those extended hours. Are you going to take advantage of early entry, or are you going to take advantage of um, those extra evening hours? Which one would you prefer, Ricky? I, I don't even know why I'm asking. Don't ask me this question. Oh, shoot, yeah. This one's so easy for us. <laughs> Hello, evening hours. Done. <laughs> okay, yeah. There's no That's it. Move on. Uh, yeah. Just hello, evening. <laughs> Mike, you're my, my. I mean, dude, morning. I mean, early bird gets the worm. Let's, let's roll. Like, let's seize the day, man. Carpe diem. Let's roll. I'm, you're well, starting Ricky's early. Thinking. Exactly, man. I'm getting, I'll have 27,000 steps before Ricky even rolls over. So there you go. <laughs> I want to do both. I want to do both. I like them both. I'd like to do the early and the evening and skip the middle. How about that? Well, I think I would get as much done. Almost. You can do both though. I mean, and that's a great strategy yeah. because in the summertime you can do both because it, it, you know, and I joke about this, but a, a midday nap in the summer is glorious. You know what? Because you have such long hours, you go back midday, you're out of the parks, you're out of the heat in the middle of the day when it's so stinking yes. hot, you get a quick swim, maybe for an hour, go back, get in your resort room, pull the drapes, make it super dark, take a nap for like an hour, recharge, Go back to the parks around five or six for dinner and stay out late. Yeah. You can do mornings and evening that way. Agreed. Oh, good stuff. All right. Well, hey, you guys ready for summer? I am. I'm ready to roll. I am. Yes, let's go. All summer right. 2023 is here. All it's right. Here. So we are going to jump out of here and wish everybody a very happy summer 2023 and hope that you are ready to get to the pool this weekend and have some fun. And, you know, all of our friends like Melissa and all those folks down in Florida, I mean, it's like this all the time, but for all of us here in the Midwest in those places where the weather is finally turning to summer, we're excited. You know, the pools are opening this weekend. We're going to have a good time. So get the barbecue ready. And thanks for taking the Be Our Guest podcast with you wherever you go. We really, really appreciate that. Don't forget our show is always brought to you by the magic for less travel. Check them out this weekend while you're hanging out on the deck or maybe, uh, cutting the grass or whatever you're doing, 
just well that doesn't make sense but like maybe while you're sitting on the couch <laughs> listen to the show while you're cutting the grass check out the magic for less's website while you're sitting on the couch it's uh the magic for less.com remember those 2024 packages for walt disney world will come out in five short days next wednesday so get in the queue for that and of course we also book walt uh disneyland disney cruise line and adventures by disney just swing by the website over at the magic for less.com please also use our amazon affiliate link when you shop online that does support us throughout the year it really does help out it's brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And a sincere thank you to the patrons of the show. You make all this possible. You allow us to get this new streaming service that allows us to get out to more locations, better quality. It really supports everything we do. Patreon.com slash brguestpodcast. And our patrons get a bonus show every week called Mike in the Midwest. So come on over. Patreon.com slash brguestpodcast. Give Ricky a follow. She's at Ricky Nibs, R-I-K-K-I-N-I-B-S. Pam's at T-M-F-L-T Pam. I'm at BR Guest Mike. We're on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, Sunday night, we'll have the live call-in show. So join us 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. Four spots, you can see the show. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Just search for the BR Guest Podcast and you'll find us. Except for on Twitter, just look for my handle, BR Guest Mike, and it's there. All right, so we're going to jump out of here and let you get on with your summer. Get going. It's time. Have some fun. And we'll be back again on Monday with a great trip report and uh, keep the keep the fun rolling. So until then, for Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike wishing you a great Friday. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. Holy cow, we just got William through a six and a half mile walk. Wow. Dang. That's pretty good. I it just sounds like a run. Nothing. It does sound like a run. <laughs> So all right well i will see you all right see, see you we'll, so i'm gonna get scott next week i guess and yes we can do all right sounds good all right see y'all yeah uh, right. uh, bye guys bye